Well, welcome to another Wednesday's Word. In 2 Chronicles, you have a prayer that Solomon's making, predicting exile and Israel abandoning. And God replies to him saying, If my people who are called by my name will turn to me and pray and turn from their wicked ways, then he would heal their land and restore them. It's a prayer I've seen published all over the place, often in the National Day of Prayer, when people are calling the church in America to prayer and to seek God's favor. And while that's not an inappropriate use of it, it misses the mark a little bit because we can stop thinking who God's people is. When Solomon wrote that, when it was first prayed, the people of God was Israel. God had called a specific people group out and they were standing in the middle of a hostile culture. They were fighting against the Philistines and Babylon, Assyria, many other threats from outside. And that prayer was saying that they would be conquered by Babylon and Assyria, taken into captive, but they would pray that people like Jeremiah would lead them to repentance, then Ezra and Nehemiah would lead them to restoration, and they would rebuild around the Word of God. But often, when I've heard that applied in our culture, it's not about the church, it's about our nation. And while the church is salt and light and powerful to change our nation, that prayer is not specific about America as a country. It's about the people of God around the world. And so if we, the church, humble ourselves and turn from our wicked ways and seek God's face. He will heal our land, not the, the sea to shining sea, the purple mountain majesties of America, the church, the people, the, the ministries that we're engaged in. Now, I'm not against the church impacting the culture. One of the big things I believe is that the church is called to be a powerful catalyst changing the world around us. But we only do that if we're not invested in the politics as much as we're invested in the Creator, in the Savior, in the grace of God. I've seen so many churches, you can get really big right now by becoming a political church and, and really catering to the left or to the right and saying what people wanna say. But what people need to hear is that we are sinners who need grace, that there is a way in Jesus. That's the message. Discipleship, taking people out of their addictions and into stability, helping single moms keep their babies and and then provide for them so they have a family, they have the resources that they need. To go to the poor and the afflicted, the disenfranchised, to send missionaries and doctors around the world. That's the land, that's the mission that we're called to do. I'm all in favor of God reviving America, but he's only gonna do that by reviving the church. And that's my vested interest. God, it says in Romans, puts political figures by his sovereignty. But whoever's in charge, whatever's happening politically, our call is to have our hearts revived, engaged, so that we love our neighbor, and we are passionately devoted to the Lord. And so, let's pray that prayer. Not just so that your political candidate wins this November, but that our, our King, Jesus, is sovereign and supreme in our lives, in our church, and then known throughout our land. All right, that's all I got for this week. Have a great day.